This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Bless them. All right, dog, to life. Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. I'm fading internet starlet Adam Ragusea. I'm 42 years old and I have a family history of colon cancer, so I'm getting ready for my first ever colonoscopy. Come with me, why don't you, for the next 36 hours. You'll drink what I drink, explosively poop what I explosively poop, and we'll learn about why we have to do this, why it works, how it works, and why you should not be so scared about doing it when it's your time. Plus, we're going to learn a whole lot about osmosis, which is a really important scientific concept for cooking in the kitchen, which is what I normally talk about. But, you know, hey, osmosis here is osmosis there is osmosis everywhere, right? L'chaim. Oh, God. That tastes much worse than I was expecting. So this is my first colonoscopy, but it is my second colonoscopy prep because I screwed up the first one. Because what they do when you go to these places, they give you this incredibly like Byzantine list of instructions and things you're allowed to eat and not allowed to eat on you know, five days prior, three days prior, one day prior, etc. And it's all really complicated. And uh, I have a lot of trouble like learning through directions. I learn better through concepts. And I suspect that if you watch my channel on the internet, you're kind of similar. And if people had just told me why we're doing these things as opposed to what I'm supposed to do, I think I would have been less likely to screw it up. So if you're still here, I'm gonna assume that you can handle some grown-up poop talk. So the uh, procedure that has been pioneered by gastroenterologists and, uh, well, people who have anal sex for decades has been uh, to just purge everything on out of there so you can just clear things up. Colorectal cancer is one of the most common and most deadly groups of cancers, and I'm at particular risk, not only because of my family history, but also because <laughs> I've been drinking rather heavily for a lot of my life, and uh, hey, alcohol is a known carcinogen, a really bad carcinogen, and you know, you take the good with the bad in this life. So with a colonoscopy, what they do is they stick a little camera up your butt to look for cancer, and it's actually one of the best coolest kinds of cancer screening because it's incredibly effective. They're able to treat these things really well if they catch them early, right? It also doesn't cause cancer in the same way that other cancer screenings do, like, you know, like a mammogram. Blasting breast tissue with radiation can cause cancer as well as detect it. Now they've done the math on it. It's definitely in your interest, ladies, to get the mammogram because it's far more likely to help you than to hurt you, but it can also hurt you. There's kind of no such risk, I don't think, with colonoscopy. The other cool thing about colonoscopy is that they can actually fix the problem while they're in there, assuming they're catching it early. What they look for is polyps, which are these little just kind of irregular bumps on the inside of the colon. And uh, if they see them when they're doing the colonoscopy, they just cut them right off there. And those polyps could be perfectly benign, but they could also grow into cancer. It doesn't really matter. They're easy to just kind of scrape off the wall. They just get rid of them while they're in there looking around. Colonoscopy is awesome. But in order to see or do anything in there, they have to clear you out of all of your poop, right? Right? and get you like exquisitely, exquisitely camera ready clean. So obviously I'm not a gastroenterologist and you should do whatever your gastro says, but this is all pretty like common standard stuff. What they'll generally say is a week out from your procedure, you're supposed to stop eating, let's see, uh, nuts, corn, you know, the things that you normally see again the highly indigestible fibers and similar stuff that's just would be a gigantic piece of debris in there for them to try to work around. You gotta just get all that out of your diet. A day prior to your procedure is usually when they have you do what they call a colonoscopy prep, which is to drink some god-awful stuff, it's honestly not that bad, that will help you just blast everything remaining out. And of the preps, there are two basic kinds. I'm gonna call them the thick kind and the salty kind. The thick kind is the one that I find really gross and I'm definitely not doing it, but it's the one that is usually better tolerated apparently by people who already have kind of irritable bowel syndrome or other things. And uh, what they're based upon is uh, really big uh, polymers, like glycol polymers usually, um, gigantic molecules that cannot be absorbed through your intestinal lining. And so uh, your body basically sends out extra water to kind of flush them out and that ends up just whoosh flushing everything out. Then there's the kind I've got right here, which is the, the salty kind, based upon salts. Um, what they are is uh, electrolytes. Let's see, this particular one is like sodium sulfate, potassium sulfate. Sometimes they use uh, sodium phosphate, which is a really common food additive used to make processed cheese. Fun stuff. 
Just a bunch of osmotically active substances that will give you osmotic diarrhea, which I still think would be a great band name. I was supposed to dilute this one with water and then uh, I just need to go ahead and drink this. Here we go. Ah! All right, things should get real interesting within a matter of minutes. All right, while we're waiting, let's see if we can't find the brown note. They tell you to do this like within arm's reach of your bathroom because when it gets real, it gets real really fast. Anyway, osmosis is one of these things that we hear about in like cooking media pretty frequently because it's, it's just something that we run into pretty much whenever we use salt, right? <laughs> We're using salt right now. And I swear to God, if some pedant gives me the whole, it's not osmosis, it's diffusion thing again on this video, I will completely lose my mind. Osmosis is a kind of diffusion and that's just not even a distinction that's really important right now. This is gonna be a massive oversimplification, but we're gonna do it together. Water molecules are attracted to each other, but not as strongly as they are attracted to what we call osmotically active substances. We're talking about various kinds of electromagnetic attraction here, right? Just, you know, think of it like magnets sucking each other together. Your intestinal lining is a semi-permeable membrane, meaning that like it is like a solid sheet, but it has tiny little holes and other pathways through which stuff can kind of transit. What these salts are essentially doing in my lower intestine right now is electrostatically attracting the water out from the rest of my body and into my colon. And this is like how digestion always works. It's how you maintain the right balance of water within you and uh, without you and all those kinds of other things. This is just a really extreme case of it. I think I need to go. Oh dear God. So what we're literally doing is just trying to draw a whole bunch of extra water into our stools just to literally flush everything out with as much water as possible. I see the exact same thing happening in this uh, sprouting sweet potato. Just go ahead and cut off a slice. Should look good on camera because it's orange. Right. Actually, I'll cut off two rounds. This one I'll completely cover with salt. This one I'll just leave dry. There's a little bit of water on the cut surface already that I've just released with my knife by rupturing cells, and that's part of the reason we're gonna be able to get this process started so fast. The sodium and chloride ions that comprise the salt are more attracted to water than they are to each other. So when they encounter water, they're gonna basically split apart from each other and then join in in the water. And at that point, you have an osmotically active solution like the one coursing through my colon right now. You can see it developing a little bit on the surface of this potato already. The cells of this potato also have semi-permeable membranes. And so what happens is these electrolytes that are in that solution are literally going to to start pulling through those electrostatic forces, pulling the water up out of the potato. Just as those same forces are pulling my body water through the semi-permeable lining of my intestine and into the main passageway of my colon, where they will be able to just flush everything on out some more. And I do need to go back to the bathroom. This is going to be my entire day. Excuse me. It's worth it. Colonoscopy is important and it's not that bad. You've had diarrhea before and this has the advantage of like not making you feel sick other than the, you know, going to the the bathroom all the time part. And then obviously you got to keep on drinking water, lots of water over the course of the day to replenish that which is being lost. And you can't eat anything obviously the day before the procedure at least because you're trying to get everything out of there. So uh, I've been getting by on uh, lemonade. I got to strain the pulp out though. Yeah. All right, it's been like an hour, basically dry, soaking wet. It's time to uh, mix up my second dose. And the other thing that you have to replenish um, when you're <laughs> um, shitting out your life force and you are also not eating anything is you gotta replenish your electrolytes, which is sort of the, the normal salts that we just use to communicate uh, electrical impulses around our bodies, right? And uh, those are, you know, the nutrient that you are going to be most acutely deprived of if you stop eating for whatever reason, you know, the first, couple of days, well, no, the first thing you're gonna feel is the uh, blood sugar going down, but then you're gonna feel the sort of badness from not having enough electrolytes and you can feel sort of sluggish. So even if you get the polymer-based prep, it's still gonna have a lot of extra electrolytes of various kinds in it, as this one does, even though it's also an electrolyte-based uh, thing. And the purpose of these extra electrolytes is to try to keep up pace with the extraordinary rate of electrolyte loss that I am experiencing right now as everything is just flowing straight on through. Pop-Tart, come. Oh, I gotta show you my water lily is blooming. Ah. A weird angle though. 
That feeling when it finally emerges, but at a weird angle. Oh God. I mean, honestly, odds are all of the alcohol that I've chugged in my life has probably contributed to my risk of colorectal cancer, but at least it's taught me how to chug. Ah, oh, okay, thank God. Really not that bad. And then the goal is to get it to the point where like, what you're uh, passing is just water, virtually clear. And let me tell you, we're already basically there. Ah, get that taste out with the uh, lemonade. Yellow lemonade, importantly, a lot of lemonades are dyed pink or red. You're not supposed to have pinkish, reddish things during this phase of the prep uh, because it would potentially stain some of the liquid inside your colon red, and uh, that would make it harder for them to look for blood, which is one of the things that they're looking for when they're in there. Mm. All right, driving back from the procedure. <laughs> that was so easy. It was better than easy. It was good. <laughs> For the record there, I was happy because the anesthesia made me a little bit kooky. I wasn't happy because someone had stuck something up my butt, though, you know, that makes lots of other people happy, and I do not want to yuck anyone's yum. Anyway, my results. Who wants to peer deep inside Adam Ragusea's butthole? You know what's weird? There's probably some people out there, like a few, who said, me, me. Anyway, I'm going to show you the real pictures right now, and if you're going to be grossed out by that, now is the time to stop watching. Three, two, one. All right, so here is my exquisitely clean colon. You can see I did my prep properly, and it paid off. All right, now they found and removed one solitary polyp. There it is right there, or rather I should say there it was right there because they took it out. In fact, technically I think they, they froze it off, which is pretty crazy. And then what they do is they send that off to a lab to get it biopsied to see if it's cancerous. And I'm really not terribly worried about it. Uh, a polyp is, is very similar to a, like a skin tag or a mole on your skin, something that could potentially become a problem at some point in your life. And it's good to get off if you can, but like it's, it's not a huge deal. Most skin tags do not turn into cancer, right? Most polyps do not turn into colorectal rectal cancer. So there you go. That's a colonoscopy prep. That's why you do it. Don't be scared. When it's your time, you're going to do just fine. Oh, and if you're curious how I screwed up the prep the first time, well, it was, uh, it was at a different doctor's office and legitimately their instructions were kind of confusing because in one place it said that any liquid you can see through is fine. And then they listed a whole bunch of drinks that um, have color to them, have a tint to them, but they're not totally opaque and therefore are, apparently were supposed to be fine. But then separately in another area of the very long set of multi-page instructions, it said, do not drink anything red tinted, right? And so I drank a, uh, a semi-transparent red tinted drink, and that made it so that they couldn't do my colonoscopy, or so they said. It's fine, I should trust the process. But for what it's worth, that's a pretty concrete example of why like, I find it much more helpful when healthcare providers can, if they have the time, tell me why we're doing what we're doing, not just tell me what to do. It makes it easier for me to follow your instructions. And just to reiterate, why do we want to be getting colonoscopies? Starting around the age of 45 is what they recommend now for most people who don't have a family history like I do. Why do we do that? Because it freaking saves lives. This is one of the most common and most deadly class of cancers, and at the same time, it's one of the most treatable. You just catch it early, go and get your colonoscopy. You do it every five years once you start doing it. I take care of that but, okay, for a number of reasons, not the least, because everybody around you, loves you, and wants you to live a really long time. I guarantee you. And I likewise guarantee that you will find no better one-stop shop for building and running a website than Squarespace, sponsor of this video. I'm still kind of struggling with what to do with my Squarespace site. I, I need a personal website, a place where I get to control what I say about myself to the world instead of just relying on social media companies or other people's accounts of who I am. And so I know I need to rebuild my personal website, but um, I'm not sure what to do. Fortunately, Squarespace has a whole bunch of tools now that can help me figure that out. What's my site about? Is it marketing, media? Is it a business where I'm selling stuff? No, it's just kind of like a personal site, you know? Uh, one of my top goals, uh, just let people know what I do, right? And uh, here, you can use their templates that are beautiful, but you can also just build your own custom website template uh, with their assistant here. Choose a color palette that feels like me. I feel rather blue these days. And, and if I just tell them a little bit about who I am and what I'm doing here, they can even auto-populate the page with some dummy content for me to start with. <laughs> Look at that. What an age we live in. I just sub in my own artwork, and there we go. Fading YouTube starlet. I think that's my new Appalachian. Appalachian? 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 I am in Appalachia. That's weird. I just embed some of my favorite videos that I would love for people to start with if they were going to start watching my stuff. 
tell people who I am and what the point of me is these days. Yes, I'm semi-retired, and I just want you to know basically about what I do, but I'm also not trying to, like, start a whole thing on the internet. I'm living the dream. Thanks if you helped me get here. Squarespace helped me get here, I'll tell you that. There we go. That was literally like five minutes, and I have my website almost done. I think I'll keep going with that one. I kind of like it. Whether you're just hanging a very simple shingle up on the internet, or if you need to build out an entire enterprise, a whole store on the internet, then you can do that with Squarespace. Just use my code Ragusia when you're ready to check out, and you can save 10% off of your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you, Squarespace. And I've said it before, and I'll say it again, Thank you, science. You're sometimes weird and gross, but good lord, you really help us live longer and better.